When someone from the U.S. hears the word propaganda, Uncle Sam dressed up in a red, white, and blue suit is probably the first thing that comes to mind. Other classic examples include the Rosie the Riveter posters from World War II and the infamous pro-Nazi images from Germany. The word propaganda didn't start being used widely until World War I, when the aforementioned Uncle Sam posters came about. But the general ideas have been around as long as governments have. Even ancient Greece used plays in the theater to share political, social, and moral teachings while drumming up a sense of nationalism. Today, propaganda comes in many shapes and sizes. Walled-off governments like North Korea use the same traditional methods as we've seen in the past, like state-run news outlets, staged concerts and shows of nationalism and parades and government-produced films showing a regime's power. But propaganda is also spread on social media every day, oftentimes without those who are sharing it realizing what they're doing. For example, a story with a misleading or fake headline might paint a country's military power in a positive light and then gets shared thousands of times across Facebook. Or a deep fake video seeming to declare victory in a battle is taken as gospel, boosting morale among a country's military or trying to push someone to enlist. This trend has played out on social media over the past few months during Russia's invasion of Ukraine. It's become clear that various types of social media posts and fake news articles are spreading propaganda. Some of it is harmless, some of it's being used to try and back Russia's claims as to why it invaded Ukraine. But with news around the war shifting constantly, it's important for everyone to be vigilant of propaganda and fake news that can spread quickly across social media. Some of this propaganda takes the form of flat out fake news stories that are meant to paint Ukraine in a negative light while trying to back up Russia's narrative that it's liberating Ukraine. This is one example of a viral tweet and Facebook post that claimed to show Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky's daughter fleeing Ukraine after allegedly calling him a Nazi. The woman in the picture is not in fact the president's daughter, nor did anyone related to him ever say anything close to this. As of August 3rd, this post was still up on Twitter, though it was flagged for being potentially misleading. It had 31 shares and nearly 110 engagements. And here is a post directly from the Russian embassy in the UK, falsely claiming that a woman who was photographed leaving a bombed out maternity ward in Ukraine was an actress who had posed in several other allegedly manipulated photos. In reality, the woman is a social media influencer who was pregnant at the time and barely escaped with her life. Twitter eventually took down this post, but not before dozens of people had already interacted with it. These are examples that do not fit the mold of traditional war propaganda like the Uncle Sam poster, but they fit the same end. They seek to sway public opinion about the war and hopefully generate renewed hope in the Russian military. In one case, the message came directly from the Russian government, which directly aligns with traditional forms of propaganda. Another layer of this is deepfake videos. These are digitally manipulated videos that can try and pass off false information. Here's one example of a deepfake where Ukrainian President Zelensky was put into a video at the onset of Russia's invasion, allegedly telling soldiers to surrender and lay down their arms. I'm it's difficult to track down the true origins of this video, but whoever created it obviously wanted to quickly declare Russian victory and attempted to weaken Ukrainian resistance. This is the hallmark of any piece of war propaganda. This is a screenshot of another digitally manipulated video which is flagged as such on Twitter, but was still available as of August 3rd. It's been shared nearly 1,100 times and appeared to show Russian President Vladimir Putin declaring Russian surrender and telling soldiers to go home. This shows that fake news and social media propaganda is not a one-sided street. All sides of a conflict, even if it's not state-backed, are looking to manipulate the social media landscape to their will. There's also a less malicious form of propaganda, but it's still propaganda nonetheless. These are memes, mis-captioned photos, and misleading headlines that are spread rapidly online. For example, the alleged story of the ghost of Kyiv recently became famous during the onset of Russia's invasion. This was allegedly a fighter pilot who was shooting down Russian planes in rapid succession and was meant to instill fear in Russian enemy combatants. National, legitimate news sources reported on this fighter pilot as fact. We have since come to learn that the ghost of Kyiv was in fact not a real person at all and was instead a story created by the actual Ukrainian Air Force. But thousands of social media posts mentioning this fake person are still online today, including this Instagram post from the New York Post. The New York Post account is verified on Instagram, so as soon as many users see that blue check mark, they're going to assume the news is legitimate and completely factual. As of August 3rd, it has more than 6,800 likes and is still on Instagram without any additional warnings that it could be misleading. 
Another popular meme that made its way around social media is Ukrainian laser cats, who are allegedly trained to spot sniper rifle laser dots. This is also not true given that cats cannot see infrared light, and most sniper rifles don't actually use infrared aiming lasers anyways, unlike what you might see in the movies or Call of Duty. This was a widely shared story across social media, but I was able to find one specific tweet with more than 7,000 total interactions that was still live as of August 3rd. It's easy to see why these types of posts go viral so quickly. They are meant to rally Ukrainian people and troops who are continuously outmanned and outgunned in this unjust war. But spreading these types of fake news stories that essentially equate to propaganda is dangerous for a few reasons. For one, they downplay the sacrifice and stories of real Ukrainians who are sacrificing their lives in this war and making real, actual contributions. They also play right into the adversary's hands. Malicious state-sponsored actors want us to be involved in a disinformation war. The second the truth gets thrown out the window, that's when the bad actors win, because that gives them more leverage to get more and more brazen with the malicious fake stories they start spreading. Take, for example, the 2016 presidential election. While the actors in that case spread fake news had an end goal in mind, their main point was to sow distrust among the American people and to stabilize democracy. What makes it worse is that some of these fake news stories, memes, and deep fakes could literally be considered state-produced war propaganda. Users must be vigilant when consuming news online, as to not fall victim to these propaganda attacks, even if we think they're well-intentioned or support the same side as we do. The description of this video includes several links to resources that include tips to spot deepfake videos and misleading headlines, and quizzes to improve media literacy. Talos is no stranger to working in Ukraine. Our long-standing relationships there have enabled us to better work with cybersecurity professionals and defenders who are helping to keep critical operations online. Stay connected to the Talos blog for our latest updates on the threats we're tracking there and the solutions that can detect them.